Hi there, my name is Dina Falcone, herbalist, educator, the author of Foraging and Feasting, and Earthly Bodies and Heavenly Hair. And what are we doing today? We are in the wild kitchen. Here we are in my kitchen, and we're going to feature a basic recipe that I hope will empower you. And it's found in my book, and it's nuts and seeds soaking and drying. So we're going to detail that for you which is a basic cookery um, technique. And what does that mean? What is happening here is we take a nut or seed, whole, organic, unroasted, ideally organic, and what you do then is you soak it in order. Why are you going to soak these nuts and seeds? And by the way, what nuts and seeds are we referring to? It can be pecans, almonds, Brazil nuts, sunflower seeds, pumpkin seeds, hazelnuts, cashews, walnuts and so on. So what we're doing though is that these gorgeous beautiful nuts and seeds, these happen to be pecans, they're powerful food, they're amazing, they're nutrient dense, they're very worthy, but they also have chemicals in them that inhibit our digestion. They're called enzyme inhibitors so they can cause gastric distress and so in order to really get the nutrients from nuts and seeds it's best to either sprout or to soak and i'm going to show you how to soak today so the other thing about soaking nuts and seeds what happens in my mind in terms of flavor so let's say you're not that crazy i don't know why you wouldn't be but let's say you're not that crazy about um, enhancing the nutritional value which is what you're going to be doing with this technique Let's say you just care about flavor. Let's say you're just a gourmet foodie. Then you want to soak and dry your nuts and seeds because it polishes them off. It makes their, fa their flavor pop. It's like um, a dusting off and a, a freshening of their flavor. So we're, we're increasing the flavor of a nut or seed, but we're also, and a big piece for me, is making them more healthful, more digestible. So how to do that? It's a really basic technique. And per cup of nut or seed of choice, you're going to use 1.5 cups of water. So that's one nut or seed to 1.5 water. Um, and in the case of today's recipe, we have two cups of nuts or seeds. So we're going to use three cups of water. And to that ratio, back to the one cup of nut to 1.5 cups of water, you add three quarters of a teaspoon of salt. And I just have here a, and not a high grade, but it's a sea salt. It is not, um, you know, a high end Celtic salt, although you can use that as well. I'm using an Italian sea salt. That's a much lesser grade. It's quite inexpensive because you're going to see that essentially once you've soaked, you, you drain it off. So I'm going to go through the steps with you here. And so let's do that. So we take, in the case of Today's recipe, we've got two cups of nuts. And to those two cups of nuts, I wanna add three cups of water. And in here, I've got a little over three cups, so I'm gonna check where I hit three cups of water is in there. And to this, don't forget, we need our salt. The, hel the salt helps to deactivate the enzyme inhibitors and the anti-nutrient factors inside the nut or seed. And so I've got salt right here and I'm gonna add, because I have, yeah, I need to add one and a half teaspoons of salt to this particular amount of nuts and water. And that is that simple, it's super easy. Just stir it around and then the next thing is that you let it steep or steep or sit whatever you let it soak for um, at least seven hours and up to 24 hours and by the wood stove is a nice thing because warmth helps you don't need hot but just some warmth facilitates the um, the soaking process and uh, what else to say seven to 24 hours of soaking one exception to that is cashews, which really can only take a six hour soak and then they actually start to rot. So that's really important that if you're going to eat a lot of cashews, you soak them, but it's really maximum six hour soak before you drain. And with the case of our pecans, though, we can let them sit 
yeah, we can go up to 24 hours if we want. So let's just review what happened here. Per cup of nut, you are using 1.5 cups of good quality clean water and 0.75 or three quarters of a teaspoon of salt. And that all gets mixed in. You don't need to use a mason jar, by the way, whatever vessel you want is cool. This is, this is just what I tend to use. Um, you can use a bowl and so on. So here we are and now to soak. We want this to soak from seven to 24 hours with the exception of cashews, which only have a six hour um, maximum soaking time. What happens though in the process, let's say it's super hot, let's say you're doing this in the summer, you live where that's 100 degrees, then really you might only soak for seven or nine hours. And if it's really cold, you might really push it to the 24 hours. If during the soaking process, there's any funk that starts to occur, which is basically by smell, you can tell, ooh, something might be a little funky there. You immediately drain and rinse. Got that? Okay. Let me show you, I have pre-soaked for us for 12 hours. This jar here, I will now replace with this jar, which has been soaking for 12 hours, exactly the same recipe that you just saw me make. You can see here that the water has taken on some of the tannins and different parts from the nuts. So it's getting a little bit more colored and I'm ready to drain this. So I'm going to take you to that next step. So to drain, I like to use, you know, just a sieve. It doesn't have to be a fine mesh strainer or anything like that. So here I have a strainer. I'm going to take you over to the sink and we're going to run water through it. You can check it out in a moment. Great. So now we're ready to drain our nuts. Pecans are going through the colander here, going through the strainer. And then I want to run some water through the nuts. Just make sure we're rinsing them nicely. That looks great now. They are ready for the next step. Let's turn off that water, shake the nuts, really get that water out as much as you can. So you do this for, I don't know, 30 seconds or so. And now we move over to drying, to the option of drying at this point. So we've fully rinsed these beautiful pecans. And at this stage, these are good for eating. So you can eat them, they're wet. They're like sort of a, a fresh nut in a way, and you can eat them at, <laughs> all at once, or you can stick them in the fridge and they'll keep for probably two days in this wet state. Now I prefer to dry them. Many of the recipes uh, that I feature in foraging and feasting and just in general, and plus I actually really like them dehydrated. So after soaking, I dry them. Um, and how to do that is you need a source of heat that's going to give you 125, maybe 135 degrees. You want a gentle, steady heat. In the winter, when the wood stove is on, I actually create a cool drying apparatus with an old wok bottom, which this is, wok bottom. And then I've got this, um, this old broil pan that also has slats in it so air can flow through. And I place that there and then I use a, a Pyrex baking tray. You can use a stainless steel baking tray or whatever. And the nuts, I'm going to do it with you, but the nuts get laid out there and then placed there. And I just want to make sure that my heat is appropriate. So I'm always touching and I'm moving the nuts around. So there's a little bit of hands on here. Um, if the wood stove goes really, really low, I can actually transfer over my whole apparatus to the actual top of the stove. Again, the stove is too hot right now for that. But again, if the fire was really low and then I can do that and again, put the heating tray on, I can even put more trivets on and just lift the um, nuts away from the heat. So there's a bit of play and management with this technique. If you're using your oven and you have a proofing setting that works beautifully. If you use a dehydrator, 
um, that's also a very easy thing. Set it at 125 or 135 and you are good to go. Okay, so let's actually do this now. <laughs> it's really basic. And just lay your nuts out. Really, you don't want them piled on top of each other. Single layer of nut. And we put this at that 125, 135 heat source. So let's do that. We take our tray filled with wet nuts and we put it on top of our heat source. In this case, we're using our wood stove's heat. And again, you can use your stove, that's your oven, as long as it goes low enough, 125, 135, and a dehydrator, which works great as well. So you dry your nuts until they are, they break easily, they're crispy, they uh, crumble in a sense, they don't have any moisture left in them. So that's the crispy nut technique. Thank you to Sally Fallon also for turning me on to this. And also the um, idea is you can eat these right away after they're crisped. Again, you could even eat them, remember, after we just soaked and drained them or when they're crisped. And then also I actually like to make 10 pounds at a time. I buy the nuts on sale and I'll you know do a huge amount and then I've got them in my freezer and that's long-term storage and then I can just pull them out so I don't have to do this every time you know, I want to eat some nuts or seeds. Again, this is all about freshening the flavor. So it's more delicious and actually more accessible nutritionally. It makes the nut or seed bioavailable to our guts. So if you've enjoyed this and you'd like more, check out my online course, Wild Food Health Boosters at wildfoodhealthboosters.com. See you then.